Hi, I'm Elin Hollis, and I'll be hosting this in a series of Our Simsbury, a program to interview some of the town um, officials in Simsbury. I'm, I live here in Simsbury, and I attend Kings of Oxford High School in West Hartford. And today we're here with William Gardner, who is a member of the Board of, Appe of Assessment Appeals. And um, so, hi, Mr. Gardner. Call me Bill. Okay. Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're from Simsbury here? Uh, well, not originally. Um, moved to Simsbury in 1960. Okay. Uh, but let me, let me take you back a little bit. Uh, I married my wife in 1954, and the company promptly moved us to California for a year. And we came back in uh, the early part of 1956, and my wife was pregnant, and we had to find a house because living in a motel was uh, uh, not really quite the thing that we wanted to do. All right. uh, so we bought a house in Bloomfield, mm -hmm. and, uh, but we knew that we would, didn't want to stay there forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in early uh, February of 19, 1957, uh, we were out driving around. We had seen an advertisement in the current for, uh, for property, uh, acreage, farmland. And uh, so we came out here in, into West Simsbury and drove up mm -hmm. West Ledge Road, uh, saw a piece of property and said, that's it, we gotta have it. <laughs> uh, continued to drive along the road and got stuck in the mud. <laughs> uh, my wife was sitting in the car with a, with a five-month-old baby <laughs> and we got towed out uh, and a week later we bought the property so that was 1957 then in 1960 we built our house and moved in uh, five days before Christmas yeah. so uh, we've been in town in Simsbury since 1960 yeah. so just around this time like a little before this time right now uh, what was before Christmas? Well, it was, well, it was, it was, it was December. It was December. Se it was December seventeenth, yeah. to be precise, that we moved in. Okay. So, uh, as I say, five days before Christmas. So uh, we've been here, if you will, let's see, going on forty plus years. Yeah. Wow. So um, you're you're a member of the Board of Assessment Appeals. Board of Assessment Appeals. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about what that exactly is? Uh, well, the Board of Assessment Appeals is made up of three people. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, I'm the chairman. Uh, Mark Wigmore and Steve Barnacle are the other two people. And we are elected officials. Uh, every two years, uh, one of the three of us uh, comes up for election, or one spot opens up for election, so mm -hmm. that every, every two years the board rolls over. Uh, I was elected uh, some ten years ago and have been on the board since then. Um, Steve came on, I believe, four years ago, and Mark came on uh, this past municipal election. So in November of next year, uh, I think my term comes up again for, uh, for election and so forth and so on. So it rotates. Uh, and hopefully what we will have is uh, uh, when we go through the re-election, revaluation re process, which is coming up, which mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit about later, uh, we hope that uh, the, the three of us will still be on the board, uh, that the revaluation process won't be so harrowing to the board members. Mm -hmm. Uh, it'll be harrowing to the town, I'm sure, but uh, to the board members at least that they'll stay on and uh, continue because uh, it's, it's something that you learn as you go through and do it year after year after year. Uh, you begin to learn uh, how to do it and how to deal with it and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a learning process. So longevity is a good thing. So what exactly is it that um, the board does? Well, let me back up. Um, in town, we have a thing called the grand list. And the grand list is the sum of all the taxable property in town. And every year um, the grand list is, is uh, firmed up uh, in October of, this, of, of the current year. And the taxes that one pays in the, in the July and uh, December or January time period are based on the value of the grand list and the value of your property uh, as of October of the previous prior year, year, the previous year. So the taxes that you'll be paying this year mm -hmm. in 19, uh, what is what, this, 1990, 2002, excuse me, 2002, were based on the grand list of October of 2001. Mm -hmm. So uh, people get their tax notices and they say, um, for example, I've got a car. And they look at their car and they said, um, my car isn't worth this money. It's not worth $10,000. Um, so they send us uh, an appeal notice. Let me, let me back up. The, the, well, yeah, they will send us an appeal and uh, ask for a hearing. 
So you're now, saying that the ten thousand dollars that they're saying their car isn't worth. They're saying is it's they're, they're the saying tax it, that they're being. No, 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 but no, that's not the tax they're paying, but that's the value of the car. The car okay. That's the value of the car, and the tax is a percentage of that value. Right. Okay. Uh, now what happens is uh, the grand list is firmed up in October, and then in the March time period of after that October is when the appeal process normally takes place. And we hold, in March, we hold three meetings mm -hmm. uh, where appellants can come to us and make their case. Uh, and then in September, we hold a one-day meeting where people, that is limited strictly to automobiles, uh, automobiles and trucks and, and motor vehicles. And the process works is that in March, in the first part of March, uh, you get a form from the assessor's office uh, you fill out the form, mail it back in or take it back in, and then that form uh, comes to the Board of Assessment Appeal, and we establish a, uh, a time, date, and location when we will be meeting, and we send, out the, f send the form back to the appellant, mm -hmm. saying, uh, please come to the town hall, the main meeting room, on um, April 2nd at uh, 5.30 p.m., and we will hear your appeal. So that's the way the process works. Now, so they come in and they say, hey, my car, uh, you're, you're saying that my car is worth $10,000 and um, it's, a, it's a 1982 Honda. Let me stop you yeah. for one second. Okay. How, how did they know that their car is worth the $10,000? Is that to show up in their... It shows up in their tax their bill. Taxes? Yeah, okay. it shows up in the tax bill. Okay. Uh, continue. Okay. Uh, so they say my car isn't worth $10,000. It's a 1982 Honda. Mm -hmm. This is a fictitious case, obviously, because right. a 1982 Honda isn't worth $10,000. Oh, <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, it's not worth $10,000. It's got uh, 150,000 miles on it. Uh, and I've gone to the Kelly Blue Book, and I've gone onto the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, World Wide Web and uh, done analysis, and here's all these pieces of paper that says it's not worth $10,000. It's worth uh, much less. Uh, so they make their case to us, and they give us the facts and the figures, and uh, we say, thank you very much. Uh, you'll hear from us uh, probably within a week as to what our decision is. Mm -hmm. uh, then after the, all of the appellants have gone through, and of course we've taken notes on all of this information as we've gone along. Mm -hmm. After the, all the appellants are through, the board sits down, and we say, okay, uh, he's given us these facts on his car. Uh, he said there's 150,000 miles on it. We now go into the book, and we have a, we have a book. And I, sh I should have brought the book with me, um, but I forgot to. Okay. Uh, we do have a book, and the book is the, is the value of all, automo all automobiles uh, in worldwide. Uh, and it's a yellow book. It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not, it's not a, uh, what's the book they call it? Anyway, it's a yellow book. It's not the phone book, the it's yellow not, it's not the, No, it's not the yellow pages. Okay. And it's a book that's about uh, yay thick, by about yay, by yay, by yay. It's, oh it's, it's a, lot of uh, a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. And it has the values um, of the car uh, as of October. And uh, trade-in value, market value, uh, depreciated value. It has all sorts of values in there. And there's a table in there for high mileage cars. So you can go to a... 1982 Honda or a 1992 Honda or a, or a 19 or 2002 BMW mm -hmm. uh, and find the value of the car. You can go to the other table and find the uh, adjustment that you make for high mileage and therefore you will adjust the value of the car down by virtue of the fact that there are extenuating circumstances. It's high mileage or maybe the case um, is uh, there's damage to the car, it's rusting, uh, so it's not a it's not worth what a uh, a good car would be, but you know it's a rust bucket, so it's going to cost it's going to be taxed less. Mm -hmm. So that's the process that we go through. Now we do the same thing for houses. Right. Uh, somebody, for example, will have uh, put an addition onto a house, mm -hmm. and the assessor will come out and uh, look at the house and say, ah, that's nice, uh, and the end result of what he does uh, may wind up in a $30,000 increase in the value of the house. Mm -hmm. So now the taxpayer gets a, a notification that his assessment has gone up as a result of putting this addition on. And they come back and they appeal to our board. And again, the process is and they, they uh, 
we meet in March, so they go through the same process that I talked about earlier. And they come back and they say, hey, my house, it didn't cost me $30,000 to put this addition on it, only because I did it myself. Right. You know, I, I went out and bought the lumber and I hammered the nails and you know, I, I did it myself. So, you know, that didn't cost $30,000. Yeah. Hey, it cost me $10,000 just for materials. But the answer is, the you put in a, value but the, the house value is, is up. Even though it only cost you 10000 it raised the value of the house. Mm -hmm. Because if you had had a contractor come in and do it, it would have probably cost $40,000 or maybe $50,000. The fact that you put in your sweat equity raised the value of it. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it is still more valuable. The house is more valuable than it was beforehand and more valuable even though your cost was only $10,000. Okay, so the, this, guy, this person now has come in and he's, he wants to appeal. So uh, very often what we will do is we will actually, our, our board will actually go out and look at the house and decide whether or not we really think that that house is worth that much more money. Hmm. So you mentioned the assessor. Now, who, who is that for the okay. person? Okay, now the assessor is David Gardner and he is no relation to me. Okay. We have the same last name, we spell the last name the same way, <laughs> but uh, he has no relation. Yeah, um, it's both like assessment appeals. Well, <laughs> no, no, he's an assessor, and and, assess and you might think that assessment appeals and and uh, assessors maybe there's something in the last name, but no, there's no relationship there. Okay. Uh, David is hired by the town. Uh, he's a full-time employee. He is a professional. He's uh, he reports to the first selectman, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a full-time job. He has two assistants in his office, and they are full-time employees, and they keep track of all the houses, all the automobiles, all the personal property mm -hmm. in town so that a grand list can be put together, which the assessor is responsible for doing, which then goes on to the Board of Finance so that they can uh, establish a tax rate, a mm -hmm. uh, mill rate on that, and raise taxes so that uh, the schools can be uh, funded and the town can be funded and the roads can be plowed and the potholes can be plowed and are filled and so forth. Yeah. So yeah, we have an assessor, let's say he's a full-time employee. Okay, so um, how does the, the, what the function of the board is just to assess the value of different things around town? Is there anything else that you do besides houses and um, cars, or is it's it basically everything? It, well, it's, 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 any, it's, it's anything that is taxed. Anything okay. that is taxed. Uh, now, personal property, in, in your case, uh, you're wearing personal property. That's not taxed. Okay. Uh, things that are taxed are automobiles. Uh, well, uh, let's, put, let's put it this way, motor vehicles, mm -hmm. which includes automobiles, trucks, Motorcycle. uh, motorcycles, uh, anything that has a license plate on it is taxed. Okay. Uh, the way that we get the information on those motor vehicles is from the state motor vehicle department. When they register? When they register. And so that information comes in to the assessor and goes into his database. Okay. Uh, anytime a house is built, um, you have to take out a permit, a building permit. Mm -hmm. And that building permit finds its way into the assessor's office to tell him that there's a house being built. Uh, he will go out and look at the house as it's being built. He will measure it. Uh, he will see how many rooms there are, how many bathrooms there are, how many fixtures in each bathroom there are, whether there's a jacuzzi uh, or a, uh, a spa uh, in the bathroom. Uh, all of those things make a difference in terms mm -hmm. of what the value of the house is. Uh, does it have central air conditioning? Does it have a fireplace? Uh, does it have a finished basement or is the basement unfinished? All these details all get into assessing and establishing the value of the house. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is one of the things that the assessor does is establish, and that's how he does it on new construction. On old construction, uh, he knows when a house is sold, he knows how, what the house selling price was because that again is a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. But that is not necessarily what the value of the house is because the value of the house has to be taken back to the last time the assessments were done. The last time the assessments were done in Simsbury was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if a house has been, a, has been a valued at uh, uh, at, at, at $100,000, well, let's, let's, uh, let's try a higher number. Uh, typically, houses are going for around $500,000 in Simsbury, mm -hmm. selling price. Well, you, take, you discount that selling price back to approximately what it would have been 10 years ago, and that becomes the value that it gets taxed at. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what we're going through now is revaluation. And the state requires that every 10 years, well, it used to be every 10 years, now it's gone back, to, it's been changed by law to every four years. Every the four years. So changing. Well, right everything there. changes so rapidly, yeah. 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 Uh, primarily because if you get into an inflation situation, right. uh, things can get all disjointed in terms of what their values are. Mm -hmm. So every four years, the state has required that we now go through a, a town wide revaluation, and we're going through that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that will do is reestablish uh, the values of all the property in town, uh, houses, cars, personal property, personal property being the, the files and the computers and what have you in, in a business. So does the assessor himself have to do all of the town? Well, or is there well, well that's, he hires a company. Okay. And uh, there is a company that has been hired and they are doing their job now. They're going around and, and uh, many, of, uh, many of our listeners, watchers, uh, have probably already met one of the assessors uh, that are going through, going around and doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, their plan is to wrap up what they're doing, uh, if I remember correctly, by the end of November. So they go to each house or just each, like each house, each house, every house in town is being visited. It's being measured. It's being inspected, and they're actually taking photographs of every house in town, every house, every business, every taxable piece of property. They're not doing, they're not doing automobiles, but they are doing you know, houses, houses and buildings. Uh, and that'll be wrapped up uh, by the end of November, if I remember correctly. Okay. And then in uh, December, they will try and make sense out of what all they've done and come up with a tentative uh, grand list, or what they call it a pricing schedule. Because what they're trying to do is, as they go through an area, uh, they're looking at a group of houses. Uh, take, um, take the area where I live. Uh, there's some 25 houses in the, in, the, in the subdivision that I live in. And they were all built at different times, but they're all of a general style and class. Mm -hmm. And so what they try to do is make sure that uh, one of these houses doesn't jump out uh, too high and something else is too low, mm -hmm. because uh, and everything else is in the middle. They want to make sure that things are pretty much balanced. So they're going to do that, taking have all the information that they've got and uh, make sure that it's in balance. And then they're going to go back and look at uh, sale prices of houses in the past year to make sure that these new values that they've come up with match out against what the houses were actually selling for. So there's a check and balance in there. Uh, then what will happen is in the January time period, uh, the, uh, the company that's doing the revaluation will meet with people uh, who apply to say, uh, you know, what, what have you got? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, the assessing company will explain why they came up with the value that they came up with, uh, and the person that's being unhappy about this, uh, that's being, that's asked for the meeting, uh, will explain why they think their value is incorrect. And the, the valuation company may or may not change uh, what they've come up with. Okay. Uh, in February, the assessor will send out notices to all the people in town saying, these are your new valuations. Are they individualized, or are you saying just the general No, no, statement? Ta no, townwide. Every, in every property owner mm -hmm. will get a notice from the assessor saying, this is your new valuation. Okay. And that then springs our Board of Assessment Appeals into life. Yeah. Because in March, because, because, it, because what will happen now is, okay, now in March, uh, because, because these things are happening in January and February, we're going to be a little bit late uh, this time around, we'll be actually holding our meetings in April. But in the March time period, uh, that is when you have you as a property owner will have your chance to appeal to the Board of Assessment Appeal. So in March, you go into the assessor's office and say, "I want a form to fill out because I don't like my assessment. And I want to I want to I want to talk to those people that did this." So uh, you fill out the form in March, and uh, the end of March, you will get a notice from the Board of Assessment Appeal saying uh, we will be meeting with you on April 5th at uh, 5.30 in the afternoon in the main meeting room of the town hall. Mm -hmm. uh, come prepared to make your case. And so you'll show up at that time and you'll make your case. 
and our board will deliberate and you'll hear from us well, and, and, and that's the and that's the process okay. So um, taxes are always a sore subject with oh, well, always everybody. <laughs> everybody. So um, they're always too high, and right. the, and the services are there's never enough services to go around. <laughs> right. So your board basically deals with kind of the complaints and um, people what people think their stuff is their stuff is worth. Um, exactly. So do people in Simsbury? I know the taxes are higher here than say in Bloomfield. Do you, um, you sometimes get complaints about? we feel we're getting overtaxed. Oh yes. Uh, w w our board obviously does, can't do anything about right. the tax rate. Uh, we can only work with the value of the property that we're being taxed on. So, mm -hmm. if, so if our mill rate is, uh, uh, is 39 mills, we can't change the 39 mills, but we can change the $100,000 that the 39 mills is being uh, assessed at. Mm -hmm. uh, but only if it makes sense to do that. In other words, if the valuation really is is incorrect, then yes, we will do something about it. If the value is not in, is not correct, or pardon me, if the value is correct, uh, we won't change it. Uh, we've had situations where people have come in and said, uh, uh, "I sold my car, and here's the bill of sale. Uh, I sold it to my next door neighbor for two hundred dollars, and here's the bill of sale." And uh, we say, uh, well, thank you very much, and we'll, we'll take it into account. Oh, you had high mileage? Yes, there was high mileage on the car, too. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back through the process, and we'll find out that the car is really worth uh, $2,000, not $200. Mm -hmm. And so we won't, we'll say, oh, so we'll, we'll make no change, mm -hmm. because the car, because there was a sweetheart deal. Right. It, was a, it was a deal to scam the state on uh -huh. sales tax, because when you sell your car, you pay the state a sales tax. Or the, or the buyer pays a sales tax. Mm -hmm. So selling it for $200 when the car is worth $2,000 is a scam on the state. And so what would and you do about that? Well, we would make no change in the valuation of the car. The car is worth $2,000. So the new owner would still pay the, the, the new tax? The new owner would still be taxed at $2,000. Okay. So, you know, we, we see through things like that. And, uh, Does that happen frequently? Or? Um, not all that frequently, but, you know, every once in a while somebody will show up and that will become obvious that that's what, what it, it appears obvious to us. Now, now, maybe that's not what really happened, but it sure it looks like it's mm -hmm. what happened, and so we just won't, we won't change it. We may give them a credit for the high mileage on the car, but not for the fact that a $2,000 car is only worth 200 Okay. But back to your question of taxes too high. Right. So why are taxes high in Simsbury? Uh, well, that's a complicated issue. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's because of the fact that the of the, of the taxes that the town raises, uh, roughly 80% of it goes to support the schools. Mm -hmm. And we have excellent schools in town, and you pay for what you get, or you get what you pay for. Okay. But secondly, uh, it also comes back to the mix of taxable property. Uh, what is, how much percentage-wise of, of the taxes is raised by houses, how much is raised by taxes on commercial property or industrial property. And so what you would find in a town like Bloomfield, for example, is you'll find that they have a, a large, relatively speaking, uh, relatively large industrial development area, and therefore a higher percentage of their taxes come from industry, levies on industry, than levies on the housing property. So. Uh, you look at Simsbury, mm -hmm. and what you find is that Simsbury has uh, a lot more housing than it has industry, and so therefore the mix in the, ra the, the ratio of the mix between taxes raised on property uh, is different in Simsbury, adversely, relative to Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, our taxes are high because uh, we have schools, uh, we have houses, people come to Simsbury because the schools are good uh, and they want to take advantage of those good schools and they come with four and five children and four and five children, each child is worth uh, or costs maybe uh, seven or eight thousand dollars to put through school so if you have four children times, uh, times seven thousand uh, that's more than, that's more in cost than you're paying in taxes. So it's actually a pretty good deal. So they're getting a good deal. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the reasons why taxes in Simsbury are, are high. But Simsbury 
is an attractive place to be. It's not only the schools, it's also the quality of life. It's the, the fact that we have uh, Simsbury Farms uh, and the town in and, and general, and um, it's a nice place to live. I wouldn't want to live anyplace else. I've been here you know, going on 42 years, and, and they're going to carry me out in a stretcher when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, so how, um, with the reevaluation 10 years ago, I know that you had just joined the board. Right. Um, do you think that the amount of um, assessments or the amount of appeals will increase or decrease with this new evaluation? I think there'll probably be more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, um, 10 years ago when it was first done, I'm going to guess that there were probably between 100 and 150 people that appealed. I don't really know for sure, but the town was smaller then. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to guess there were fewer. This time around, we're, we're, we're guessing that there's going to be somewhere between 200 and 250 people that, wow. that will appeal. Uh, town's bigger, more housing. Uh, and just that's a, we're that's just, a we're lot of appeals. That's for a lot of three appeals people for three board. people. Yeah. Do you think that um, over time the board size will maybe change? That there'll be more positions or? Well, no. For for a reval, um, three people is is probably marginal. But what that will do is, is, is if you, uh, it takes roughly fifteen minutes to do a housing oh, okay. to do a house. Uh, it takes maybe f five to seven minutes to do a to do an automobile, but it takes roughly fifteen minutes to do a house. So. What about if you go to visit the house? So well, that the, well uh, oh, that'll take long, but we don't do that on the same day. Okay. What we do is we, we will schedule, uh, the three of us will each take uh, roughly 10 people during, a, during an afternoon. We'll, we mm -hmm. start at like 3.30 and we go to 6 o'clock. Well, in that time period, you can handle 10, I think it is, appeals. Uh, so if all three of us are there on, a, on any given day, we can handle 30 appeals. Well, if you have 10 days, you can handle 300 appeals. Yeah. So over a period of... Uh, roughly 10 days, uh, more or less, we ought to be able to handle all the appeals. And those appeals that uh, need a visit, uh, we will schedule a visit at a separate, po a separate time mm -hmm. to go out and look at the house and uh, see what it is that the, the buyer, or the, pardon me, the, the owner, uh, thinks is important and why value is too high or is incorrect. Uh, there was one a number of years ago uh, that I remember, where uh, he came in, the, the owner came in and said, hey, I, I don't have this much space in my basement. The house isn't that big. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, so we set up a meeting to go out with him, and sure enough, it wasn't. <laughs> it was half the size that was on the, on the chart. There's a, there's a piece of paper, and I didn't bring it with me, but there's a piece of paper, let me borrow this a minute. And on the piece of paper, there's uh, all the information that uh, uh, goes into what your house looks like. There's a sketch in here that uh, shows what the floor plan is, the number of how the number of rooms and where they are, whether there's a deck, uh, whether there's a sunroom. Uh, oh, somewhere over on this side, uh, there's a listing of uh, all the rooms, the number of bathrooms, the number of bedrooms, the number of uh, kitchens, uh, mm -hmm. how many fixtures there are in each bathroom. Like a blueprint. It's, it, it's, it, it's not a, well. The floor plan is over here, mm -hmm. but but this is a listing of all the oh, all, of all the pertinent information that goes into the appeal. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of numbers up in here that talks about the calculations of the uh, of how you take the numbers here and make sense out of them in terms of what the value of the property is. Mm -hmm. And it's typically a two-sided piece of paper because there's so much information on it that you've got to put it on two sides. But every every property in town has a piece of paper uh, this size on two sides that defines uh, the property. And so when we go out to look at a house, we can look at it and say, oh yeah, uh, I see here that it says that the house should be um, 40 feet long. I've got my tape measure here. I see it's 35 feet. Yeah, there's a, there's a mistake. Oh, okay. So the Board of Assessment Appeals is really helpful in lowering taxes or um, making the right, correct, the correct taxes for making, make, making personal the, property. Yeah, making, making the personal property and the property of the values of the, of the cars and the houses uh, all consistent across everybody because what we're looking for ultimately is is fairness, equitability between all the taxpayers. We don't want uh, somebody paying too much and somebody not paying enough. We right. want everybody to be paying their People. fair share. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we have to wrap it up, but thank you so much for joining us. It was great to meet you. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us in this um, program of Our Simsbury, and we hope you'll see us next time on the program. Thank you.